How you doing, Southern Alberta? This is the Stormbringer with the PZW Match of the Week on Shaw Television. This footage shot this past January, Medicine Hat AB, the Cypress Center. If you ask me, it looks like an airline hangar from somewhere down in Arizona. One of those spots, Tom, where maybe they hide the aliens down in New Mexico or Arizona, something like that. But at any rate, it is the Cypress Center Pavilion Medicine Hat, the beautiful Delana, myself at ringside with Delana, and PZW newcomer Chase Patrick. As you can see, Chase laying in the boots. Tom, I got to give credit where credit is due. Chase, obviously not intimidated by the prospect of wrestling a young lady, treating her as if she was one of the guys. Maybe it's uh, a little insight into the personality and the personal life of Chase, but uh, that's just an observation for another day. But at any rate, Delana with the upper hand now. Delana, a beautiful, oh, Chase cuts her off. You can see myself at ringside. You know, Tom, I got to be honest with you, it's been difficult going to the ring with Delana. Part of the reason why I was interjecting myself in some of her matches, some of you may recall on the PZW match of the week here on Shaw, Adrian Walls taking some liberties with the beautiful Delana. If uh, you've never seen the footage, PowerZoneWrestling.net has all our amazing Shaw footage on it. Uh, some pretty disturbing stuff. Adrian Walls uh, basically used a maneuver. He calls it the curb stomp. I call it a jerk taking liberties with somebody after they lost the match. But at any rate, he took a few uh, few liberties there. And you can see, talking about liberties, Tom, there's a liberty. Chase Patrick choking her out of the top rope. Obviously, I'm ticked off. Obviously, I'm getting pretty choked here at Ref Vince. You know what? Ref Vince and I have a pretty solid relationship. I genuinely really like the guy. But honestly, Tom, it's things like this that drive me insane. I know there's a five count, but give me a break. There's a 20-year-old girl in the ring with a grown man. And look at him. And, he's, and he says to the ref, oh, but I got a five count. You know, Chase Patrick is a newcomer, but he made a hell of a dent in the business getting in this quick little run he had with Delana. They wrestled here in Madison Hat. They had another match a few days later in Lethbridge. Uh, unbelievable competitor. And I got to give credit where credit's due. Like I said, give the devil his due. Chase Patrick not intimidated at the prospect of wrestling a girl and in there just pounding on her. Absolutely merciless. I, I'm curious to see where Mr. Patrick can go with Power Zone Wrestling. Uh, it is my understanding that we are the first company that he has acquired a regular position with. And uh, I'm curious. He uh, On PowerZoneWrestling.net, he was very vocal about taking some shots at me. And uh, uh, I like to say my beautiful long locks. You know, calling me a, a mangy hippie and a few other uh, not so nice things. There we go, the block by Delana. Delana with the upper hand on Chase. Looking to set in, a nice boot, a nice boot right into the stomach. Oh, he caught, drops her right on her head. Unbelievable stuff. You can see that obviously Delana is in a world of hurt as Chase Patrick dumps her right square on the, oh, I take a shot at Chase. Chase, trust me, I'm the last guy in the world you want to make fun of. Boom, pushes him in. Delano with the boot to the stomach, sets him up. Could it be a whirlwind tornado DDT? Unbelievable stuff. Three count. Here it is. The pin, the win by the beautiful Delana. All right, Tom, seeing as how the Delana Chase Patrick match happened in three and a half minutes, what I want to do here, Tom, is I want to show what possibly was one of the most controversial endings in a Power Zone wrestling match in the history of our company. Two PZW newcomers here wrestling once again in Medicine Hat this past January. Beautiful Bobby Fletcher versus Lee Montana. This was match number three in a series of matches these guys had had all around Southern Alberta. They'd wrestled here in Lethbridge. They'd wrestled in Brooks. Here they are wrestling in Medicine Hat. As you can see, referee Jody was assigned this matchup. An unbelievable rivalry between both of these great wrestlers, Tom. I was, I was floored at the acumen that both these guys had considering this was really their first established run with any professional wrestling company in North America. Uh, Lee Montana, a training background, the Lance Storm Training Academy, an incredible performer, an incredible upside. I myself personally, being from Texas, a big fan of Mr. Lee Montana. Beautiful Bobby, Lee Montana from Medicine Hat. The crucifix sets him up, going for the win. Jody there for the count, and the kick up by Beautiful Bobby. Not a lot is known about Beautiful Bobby. After losing a taped fist match in the month of February versus Lee Montana, Beautiful Bobby contacted the offices of Power Zone Wrestling, said he wanted to take a break. 
he actually said that he wanted to work on some of his cardiovascular training. He had bulked up quite a bit in his professional wrestling training, had bulked up quite a bit preparing himself for his first run with PZW and was the first to admit that he thought he'd come in a little bit heavier than he should have and didn't quite anticipate the cardiovascular abilities of a lot of the PZW performers. I think that's a compliment, Tom. And actually, one of the things that, that impresses me about beautiful Bobby is that instead of banging his head against the same brick wall, he decided, I'm going to take a break for a while. I'm going to change my training. I'm going to change who I am as a wrestler and walk into this a little bit more prepared for what PZW has to offer. And the door is open to him. Uh, as an individual, I don't know if I necessarily like Bobby Fletcher as a human being, but I am impressed with beautiful Bobby Fletcher as a performer and as a wrestler. Locks in a chin lock on the Lee Montana. He needs to get his elbow in. There we go. Now he's using his body weight to his advantage. Once you start using gravity on your side, Tom, and that's one of the things, Tom, that a lot of people don't understand about a chin lock. A lot of people sit there. Randy Orton has made the chin lock famous now on Monday Night Raw, WWE's uh, flagship broadcast. And a lot of people get frustrated and they say, I don't understand a chin lock. I don't understand why if you have a guy on the run, you're just going to try to lock in an elbow under his chin. The point is, you can see now the energy it takes for Lee to fight out. Lee's had to use all that energy to get up. You start to use gravity as an ally. But Lee's got him back, a beautiful back elbow, a big clothesline, setting him up. Bobby's walking into it, a second big clothesline. Bobby Fletcher is on the tracks, as I like to say. Huge drop kick, jumping Jim Brunzel, 1985, the Killer Bees. And here's the controversy. Jody's hand, I happen to see from the locker room area, Jody's hand hit three. Lee Montana, the winner on the drop kick.